Lillian Sullivan is the daughter of John and Deborah Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan is our own middle school math teacher. Lily came to Carlisle in second grade. She has a sister, Abigail, in fifth grade. Lillian loves creative hobbies like cross-stitching, diamond paintings, and crocheting. She is a Girl Scout and a dancer. At school, she performs in the middle school plays and represents her class in the SCA. Lillian has a big task in form. She studied Disney, The Man, The Mouse, and the Mammoth Entertainment Empire. Camden Holland is the son of Chambre Scales and the grandson of our own head of school, Mrs. Gracie Agnew. He lives in Martinsville and has been with us since seventh grade. His sister, Suri, is in the second grade. Camden is a golf aficionado and likes to chip in his backyard with his pops. He also runs track and appeared in the Lion King, Aladdin, and in the middle school walking path performance. Right now, he enjoys spending time with his family, but later hopes to attend the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill or the University of Texas. Camden had an unusual form topic, the Thiel Fellowships. These are grants of money given to young would-be entrepreneurs who have dropped out of college. He found some interesting results. Please join me in welcoming Camden to the podium. Most 18-year-olds would not know how to, do, how to run a business and would not know what to do with $100,000. That didn't discourage Peter Thiel. He founded Thiel Fellowship in 2011. He's a multi-millionaire investor. He made the Thiel Fellowship in order to support young entrepreneurs like Austin Russell, Paul Gu, and Tara Bosch. The Thiel Fellowship was founded in 2011 by technology entrepreneur Peter Thiel to allow college-age individuals to start their own business through the fellowship. These young entrepreneurs skip college or suffer ten get to receive a $100,000 grant. The Thiel grant is spread over a two-year period. Peter is not only the founder and CEO of the Thiel Fellowship, he also co-founded PayPal. In addition, Thiel is an investor in Facebook with a network of more than $5 billion and co-founder of a technology software company worth over $20 billion. Many people have become successful in life and with the Thiel Fellowship, with the Thiel Foundation's help. Fellows have collectively launched more than 50 companies to raise more than $63 million in the investment and recently generated more than $115 million in income. The Dill Fellowship allows 25 young entrepreneurs each year to build any type of company and recipients are provided mentors and financial support. Three of the most Dill Fellowship recipients include Austin Russell, CEO of a technology company, Paul Gu, the founder of a credit card, a credit refinancing company, and, and Tara Barsh, the founder of a canning company. Austin Russell started this business when he was when he was 17 and still in high school. He founded a self-driving car technology named Luminar. At the age of 11, Russell actually wrote the software. He even programmed the framework in his Nintendo DS to turn it into a cell phone because his parents wouldn't let him buy one. Russell also built a research lab in his parents' garage when he was 11. When Russell was 15, he started studying LIDAR which stands for light detection ranging. It's a method of using lasers to, to measure the distance of an object. It can be used to create 3D maps of, of the environment in real life. It is used in self-driving cars to help the car identify and navigate around obstacles. Russell briefly attended Stanford University to study physics, but dropped out of college when he was 18. He said, dropping out is right for some people and for people who know what they want to do in their life. Later, Russell applied for the Thiel Fellowship. He was awarded the Thiel Foundation Fellowship in 2011 and began expanding his company immediately. Luminar headquarters is in California, California but Luminar also has a, a 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Orlando, Florida that employs 400 people. Luminar focuses on making affordable versions of LiDAR sensors that are universal and better quality sensors than other companies. Luminar also makes its own 
own computers, lasers, receiver, receiver and scanning mechanisms, and even and processing electronics that are used in self-driving cars. According to the company, Luminar sensors see 50 times better than other companies' sensors and even have a better range. Companies, companies that use his sensors include Ford, Volvo, and Mercedes-Benz. In December 2020, Luminar was made public on the stock exchange and is currently trading around $30 per share. Another Dell Foundation recipient is Paul Gu, who won, who won the fellowship in 2011. Paul attended Yale in 2011. He was introduced to the Peter Thiel Foundation. He's the founder of Upstart, which helped people refinance credit card debt. He leads a team of 20 personnel. Goose team used data science to decide if the company would refinance Upkin debt. Upstart use, uses machine learning and unconventional data, like the applicant's college major to decide borrow risk to make sure people can pay the money back. Upstart's unconventional data analysts, the company actually refinanced at a 27% higher rate than normal lenders. Gu himself has trouble getting a loan, so he developed new methods. Gu attended public school all his life. His father, who was really good at understanding math and science, would tell Paul, read the whole math textbook, I'm going to quiz you. And that helped Paul to teach himself rather than learning in a classroom. Tara Bosch won in 2017. She's the founder of Smart Suites. Her, biz her business is worth, worth $400 million. She went to school at University of British Columbia. But a Thiel Fellowship lured her to drop out of college. The company's products of gummies were already selling across Canadian shelves when she won the award. When she first began her, her business, she bought gummy bear mold from Amazon. Less than a year later, Smart Soups was launched across Canada. She was inspired to start Smart Sweets because of having an unhealthy relationship with food growing up. She embarked on a personal journey to learn how to make smarter choices and explore the effects of sugar on health. The gummies have no added sugar and all natural, non-GMO, and even packed with a plant-based fiber. The company's products are also free of sugar, alcohol, and ingredients that cause common allergies. The new gummy bears are packed inside of a bright pink bag, and the sour gummy bears are in a lime green bag. Millions of her gummy bears are sold now. For more than 10 years, the Thiel Foundation has helped young entrepreneurs build their businesses and follow their dreams. And if not for the Dell Foundation, companies like Luminar, Upstart, and Smart Suites may have not even got off the ground. The Dell Foundation will continue to help young businessmen and women in the future. Um, so, uh, how competitive is it to receive one of those dollar bills? And um, what are some of the requirements that they have to um, have to be even considered for one? Well, I would say some of the the requirements are 20, you have to be 22 years of age and under. And personally, I would say the only thing you got to do is just apply and then it might be some luck of getting in because they're picking 25 young young people that want to be an enter the Dell Foundation. Okay. Do they ever have to um, like present a business plan or anything? Um... I would say, yeah, they have to have like a great mindset before they even, I mean, I would have a great mindset before I even started applying to have my business like already set up. Eight years after the fellowship. Um, well, first of all, could you tell me what was the first thing you did with the money? And also, you mentioned that a lot of the um, recipients, uh, not a lot of them, but some of them dropped out of college because they already had one so with you. By this point, do you think would you still go to college and study, or no? Yes, I will definitely go to college and study. I do not plan on dropping out anytime soon. Okay. And what would you do with the money? I will at least try my best to start a harvest foundation to help those people that's in need. Okay, thank you.
I welcome Lillian Sullivan to the podium to discuss her study of Disney. For kids and adults around the world, the name Disney invokes images of magic and wonder. Walt Disney shows us the fantasies and magic that are in his heart. He created his world of imagination out of nothing but his creativity and a pen. Disney rose from a small farm in Missouri to be the founder of the largest entertainment complex in the world. Beginning with The Simple Mouse, his creative endeavors grew to include one of the best-loved animated feature films, theme parks based on Disney films, and adventure movies to limitless digital content. Walter Elias Disney was born in 1901. When Disney started school, he showed a liking to drawing with watercolors and crayons. When Disney started high school, he took drawing, photography, and was a cartoonist for the school paper. At night, he took courses at the Art Institute of Chicago. Walt Disney's first job was for Pessman Rubin Commercial Arts Studio, where he designed letterhead and ads. It was also where he met Oob Iwerks and they started to work together. Soon after they started, Disney and Iwerks were laid off. Afterward, afterwards, they started at the Kansas City Slide Company to work and learn about animation. Disney and Iwerks left the company and started Laughograms, which were funny short films. After a year and a half, the company was forced to shut down. Disney and his brothers, Disney and his brother Roy, started Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio in 1923 and created Oswald. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was a cartoon rabbit and debuted in Trolley Troubles in 1927. Overall, Walt Disney completed 26 Oswald shorts. After Walt Disney lost the rights to Oswald, he came up with the idea of Mickey Mouse. Even though he was still in contract with Universal and Oswald, Disney started to create Mickey. Between the late 1920s and 1932, Disney produced several Mickey Mouse silent films. Mickey starred in one of the first cartoons with sound called Steamboat Willie. In that cartoon, Mickey is a sailor on a steamboat, and on the boat, Mickey plays music with Minnie and uses wash tubs and the animals as instruments. Mickey's girlfriend, Minnie, was introduced and would be in future Mickey cartoons. Mickey was later joined by his group of friends, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. In 1932, Walt Disney even got a special award from the Academy of Motion Picture Art and Sciences for making Mickey. Over time, all of Mickey's mischievous personalities transferred over to Donald Duck. Before 1937, cartoons were around six minutes long, acting as fillers between feature movies. Walt Disney showed everyone that making a full-length cartoon was possible and that people would watch it. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was Walt Disney's first full-length film. Snow White is about an evil queen that poisons Snow White, and then Snow White's true love comes and saves her. Everyone, including his wife Lillian, thought that a long cartoon would be a disaster. Disney continued with his plan and produced it in Technicolor. The film premiered in 1937, and everyone loved it. Disney won an Academy Award for the song Someday My Prince Will Come, along with other songs from the movie that were nominated for an Oscar. The film has been re-released many times. Disney continued to make full-length mo movies with the same general formula as Snow White. Those movies included Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. In all three movies, a beautiful young girl that started out in humble circumstances experiences a life-changing adventure. These plots were very popular at the time and still are today. The Walt Disney Company created another entertainment masterpiece with the Disney theme parks. The idea for the Disney parks started when Walt was upset that he did not have a place to go to spend time with his family. So he bought the space to make Disneyland. Disney oversaw every detail of the planning. He tried to make his parks the best it could be for families. The park allowed children and adults to experience the magic and step into the movies. Walt Disney died of lung cancer at age 65, right before Disney World opened. During his lifetime, he won 22 Academy Awards. These awards were across many categories, such as Best Animated Short Film, Best Documentary Feature, and others. After Walt Disney died, Roy decided to keep his legacy going, and the company continued to make films like The Little Mermaid, or A Mermaid Longs to Live on Land, and Beauty and the Beast, where a girl learns to love someone not based on their looks. As the Disney company continued to grow bigger, they, they then started to use new technology in their movie productions. 
A Bug's Life was one of the first computer animated movies for Disney. As the Pixar company continued to grow, they purchased Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Fox, and each cost about $4 billion at the time they bought it. The companies own fantasy and science fiction movies that are very popular with people and still are today. In 2019, the Disney company started Disney Plus, a streaming service that allowed people to watch anything Disney. The Disney parks would, world, across the world were making $26 billion in 2019 before COVID-19 hit. Parks across the globe had to be shut down to try and stop the spread of the virus. Park employees were laid off until the parks reopened in July. Upon reopening, there were still effects of the pandemic. They had 28,000 layoffs in the U.S. parks alone, and the Florida parks attendance was down 80%. Walt Disney showed people that a mouse could set a good example, a duck could express our frustrations, and a maid can become a princess. His determination and imagination allowed him to have a thriving company of entertainment that touches lives every day. Disney has continued to change the way people watch movies, spend time with family, and show the world that nothing is impossible. Thank you. Um... So with several movies um, being pulled from Disney Plus because of controversial reasons, um, do you think they may go back and rewrite some of those so that they can um, eventually be re-released to the public? I don't think they're going to rewrite them. I think they they might just keep them on like the adult side so people understand this is history. We shouldn't like take it away. Thank you. Um, good job. Um, why did you choose this person? What interests you about the topic of interest? Um, I chose this person because his inspiration and creativity just is amazing. And how much he started off with and then he grew to this big company that we have today. Thank you.